Ladies and gentlemen, Chair of the Jewish Leadership Council, without whom today would not have happened, Jonathan Goldstein. Good morning, everybody. How wonderful it is to see us all standing here together in a rather surprising rainy Sunday morning in Manchester. Or is that my English irony getting the worst of me? We are all hugely honoured to be here with so many friends to say enough to racism in the Labour Party. Manchester has always held a special place in my heart, not only as one of the jewels in the crown of Anglo Jewry, but it's where myself and my wife both spent very happy years as a student. And whether you're from Leeds, you're from London, Liverpool, or you're a local Mancunian, I thank each and every one of you for taking the time to come to these iconic gardens and stand with the opportunity of thanking CST for making us safe this morning. The selflessness of the volunteers in CST should be admired and thanked by us every day. And whenever you walk past the security guard for CST, please make sure you say thank you, because they really are the heroes of our community. It pains me to say it, but really I know none of you would want to see me here today. But we are here, and we stand together, united, because we are living through extraordinary times. Anti-Semitism is rife in the party led by Jeremy Corbyn. And so in London, the Chelsea and the board took to the streets. We raised our voices outside the world's oldest parliament. And we said, enough is enough. And now, here in Manchester, with a crowd that I'm proud to say outdoes London. Well done, Manchester. We have a voice. And together, we say, even louder, after three, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough of treating the Jews with contempt. Enough of failing to discipline racist party members. Enough of being accomplices to the spreading of lies and venom about Jews. Enough of tolerating vicious attitudes towards those who challenge racism. Enough of engaging in anti-Semitic tropes. Enough. I know that for many, this fight has been deeply unsettling. As it has for me, and most I know. But we are in uncharted territory. The last thing we want to be doing is having a public spat with Her Majesty's opposition. But we have no choice. This needs to be put right. This is about our freedom and our security in this country. When a minority experiences racism, it should not have to take to the streets to be taken seriously. But it was only when we took to the streets that Jeremy Corbyn acknowledged the enormity of the issue and the uniqueness of modern anti-Semitism. It needs to be understood and said loudly every day. You cannot be friends with people who want to kill Jews everywhere in the world. It is unacceptable. When we did meet with Mr. Corbyn in April, all we did was present what the community expected, the bare minimum that Labour needed to begin to rid itself of the racist cancer that has spread throughout its body polity. Defeating anti-Semitism is not, and never has been, just about accepting one definition. 
accepting a definition without meddling, which of course didn't happen, is the absolute minimum, especially from someone who claims to be a militant opponent of anti-Semitism. Defeating anti-Semitism is about so much more than that. We need to see a change of culture, a recognition of past misdemeanors, a promise to move forward in good faith and action to tackle anti-Semitism. Unfortunately, we have seen or heard none of that. We are a community which is open and confident and proud of its traditions. We have positively integrated into all parts of society and public life. We contribute to every aspect of life in this country. We are Zionists. We support the existence of the State of Israel. We cherish it. We take pride in it. We love it. And no one should ever make us feel ashamed for saying that. Never. The Jewish Leadership Council and I personally will always work our utmost to ensure that our community is protected and secure, both physically and otherwise. I want, however, just to give you some bright spots, because over the course of the last five months, there's one big aspect of this whole debate that has given me heart, given me hope, and that has been the support that we have received from the non-Jewish community in Britain. Those decent... Those decent British people who represent the British values that we believe in, who understand that racism has no part in society. Be those people like Trevor Phillips who last week really stood out when he described the leadership of the Labour Party in the words that he used. With J.K. Rowling with her 14 million followers on Twitter and so on and so forth. We need to remind everybody in our community that there are people out there in solidarity with us. There is a small percentage of this community that is standing against us, but the British people understand what's right. The British people understand British values, and rightness without in this debate. We have to keep our voice strong, we have to keep our voice loud, but we will understand that the people of Britain will stand behind a community that's been here since the 17th century and proud to be here. Because this is about fighting for what is right, what is just, of having the freedom to declare, I am a Jew, I'm a proud Jew, I'm a British Jew, Ibri Anochi. And ladies and gentlemen, it gives me the utmost pleasure to welcome to the stage a proud Jew and a proud Brit. Someone who's been a friend and a mentor to so many of us. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Rabbi Ephraim Mervis.